Okay, I'm back for section 1.4 of our geometry book. This time I'm going to try having the paper next to me. Maybe that'll work out better. So y'all be patient. I'm learning all this stuff. I'm wishing Levi were here to help me. Okay, so we're going to start with some more about different kinds of geometry figures. The first one we're going to look at is a segment. That is, uh, it's just a part of a line that consists of two endpoints and all the points in between them. So in this case, I drew the dashed lines to show that this, this could be line AB, but if I stop at the endpoints A and B, then it becomes the segment. Now there could be some more points in between A and B that aren't marked, or there are more points but I've just marked the end points. And if I'm going to write down, and I'm talking about a segment, I'm going to write AB with a line, but this time there are no arrows on the line at all, just a line with no arrow ends. So that means a line segment, okay? And then we also have a ray. A ray is a part of a line that consists of one end point, not two, like the segment, but one end point, and, and then a line on the other side of the end point. So it includes the endpoint and all these points that go in the other direction. So in this first picture that I've drawn, I did dash out a line to show that it could be part of the line x, y, but we're going to choose x as an endpoint and it's going to go on indefinitely forever in the direction of y. That's why the arrow end is on this side. So I would call that ray x, y, or I would draw an x, y, and then a line over it. The, there's one arrow end. And it always, uh, when I write down a ray, I always start with the end point. So in this case, it's X. And then I write the other letter, and the arrow goes in the direction of the other letter, that I'm, the other point that I'm using. Okay, here's another ray that could be found on the line X, Y. This time I'm letting Y be the end point, and the line is extending, the ray is extending in the direction of X. And it goes on forever that way. And it includes all the points that would be on that part of the line. So if I were writing that one, I would write the y first because y is the endpoint. So it would be ray yx, or I could write it yx with the arrow going towards the x because that's direction, the direction that it's extending in. So the endpoint always is the first point that you write down, and the arrow is always going over the point that, where the ray is extending. Okay, another definition, opposite rays. If I have a line drawn like this, this line QS, there are two opposite rays. One would be RQ. It starts at R and extends in the direction of Q. And RS is another. It starts at R and it extends in the direction of S. Now notice they have the same endpoint, but they're extending in opposite directions. When we put opposite rays together, they always form a line. So they have to be collinear rays, they're on the same line, but and they, they've got this endpoint that's common to both, but they're extending in opposite directions of each other. Okay, so look at this example. I've drawn a line here with the points L, P, and Q. First, I want you to name three segments, and I want you to write them down uh, using the segment notation. Okay, three segments on this line would be the segment LP, the segment PQ, and the segment LQ. Okay, now I want you to name four rays, and I want you to write them using the ray notation. There are more than four choices for this one, so I will write down more than four. Okay, so four rays, I'm going to write more than four because there are, so make sure I get your example. One would be LQ, so the endpoint is L and it's extending in the direction of Q. Uh, one would be PQ, so P is my endpoint and it's extending in the direction of Q. Another would be QP, so this time Q is the endpoint and it's going in the direction of P. 
Um, QL is another. So Q is my endpoint. It's going in the direction of L. LP could be one. And PL. Now some of these would be overlapping. For instance, LQ would overlap LP because the endpoint's the same and it's going in the same direction. It's just that I could use any of these points to name it. So if you got four of those six, then you're good. All right, now the last thing, I want you to name two opposite rays. Okay, two opposite rays here could be PL. So endpoint P going in the direction of L and PQ. So endpoint P going in the direction of Q. And when I put those together, I get the line LQ. Okay. The next thing that we, next definition we have is parallel lines. Parallel lines are coplanar lines that do not intersect. So that means they're lines that are in the same plane, but they don't, they don't intersect each other. I'm going to use the bottom of this. Okay, so um, even here in this cube, if I were to draw some lines in the plane BFGC, that did not intersect. Those would be uh, parallel lines. Coplanar means they're in the same plane, and if they're parallel, they don't ever intersect. All right, skew lines are not, they are non coplanar, so they are not in the same plane, uh, and they're, so they're not parallel, and they do not intersect. Now these are harder to picture, but the cube usually helps. So if I'm looking at this cube and I want to find lines that are skew, I would pick a I would pick a line from a plane over here and then a line that it would never intersect with. So for instance, I might pick the line BC and the line HD. Those are not in the same plane. Um, and they don't intersect. So that would be called a skew line. So let's see. See if you can find, um, in using this cube, see if you can think of two parallel lines that are in this cube. Now remember, Parallel lines need to be in the same plane. So think of those cubes, think of the faces of the cube as that they're a plane. So for instance, A, E, F, B, that's a plane and it, w and it can and extend in all directions. But you wanna find two parallel lines. So you might use that face and find two lines that are in that plane that are parallel so they don't ever intersect. Okay, you might have chosen AB, the line AB, and the line EF. Notice those are both in this plane, and they don't intersect. So I would write that they are parallel. We've seen this in algebra with two lines that look like the side of a ladder but no rungs. That means parallel. You also could have chosen AE, line AE. Um, it would be parallel to line BF. So here's AE and here's BF. Now I want you to try to find uh, an example of skew lines. Now these are, remember, not in the same plane and they don't intersect. They're not called parallel because they're not in the same plane, but they still don't intersect. So see if you can use the cube to find an example of two skew lines.
Okay, there are a lot of examples, but I'm going to show you this one because I can do it. I'm going to make this look like a line that's extending. So let's say AB was this line that's extending this way, and I pick CG. Those two are not in the same plane. Now, it looks like they might be intersecting here, but actually the CG is behind that, that line AB in a whole different plane, so they don't ever intersect. So AB, the line AB, and the line CG would be skew lines. They aren't in the same plane, and they don't ever intersect. Now there are other examples, that's just one that I picked. So you may have picked a different example. Okay, finally, we're going to look at parallel planes. Okay, parallel planes are planes that don't intersect. So we're not talking about jets. Um, that's my little geometry joke for the day. We're talking about uh, the, the plane. So again, I'm going to think of something that looks like a cube. This time it might be more of a prism because it's not all the same side lengths. The easiest way for me to picture planes are in, in this way because it helps me to visualize what's going on. Now I'm not great at drawing them. You're probably better than me. That's okay. All right, I'm just going to label these points. The corners. Mm. That's supposed to be a corner. Okay. So here's my um, rectangular prism. So planes don't, a plane that uh, is parallel to another plane are just two planes that don't intersect. So you're going to, you wouldn't pick the side of the cube when the front of the, or the prism in the front of the prism. You would pick something like the front and the back, or the top and the bottom, or these ends, things that you know would never intersect. So I could say something like plane a, B, C, D is parallel to plane G, H, I, J. Okay. Now, a plane can also be parallel to a line. So, I could have a line maybe on another side that was parallel and it's never going to intersect. Uh, with the plane. So an example of that would be the front face of the cube and the line G GH. So it's not going to intersect. Um, it is, the line is parallel to the plane. Okay, so these are, we're talking about planes being parallel. This is talking about plane and a line being parallel. All right, let's look at exercise three on page 25. Get my book. Okay, so if you look at exercise three, they have a they have a line drawn um, to the right of the exercise, and they're asking you to name a pair of opposite rays with T as an endpoint. Okay, so for that one, uh, if you're looking at the line that they've drawn in, it has four letters, R, or four points, R, S, T, and W. And they're asking us to name a pair of opposite rays with T as an endpoint. So, uh, 